Hello everyone, I'm Yu Lingjing from Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's my great pleasure to attend this conference and present our paper. The title of the paper is Your Water Broadcast, Identification of Mobile and IoT Devices from Public Wi-Fi. The authors are Yu Lingjing, Luo Bo, Ma Jun, Zhou Zhaoyu, and Liu Qingyun. This is collaborative research among Chinese Academy of Sciences, the University of Kansas, and Tsinghua University. In this paper, we focus on the problem of device identification. This has been an important and challenging problem in network measurement, device management, cyber situational wireless, and many other applications. In a wireless network, it is essential for system administrators to identify connected devices and manage those devices accordingly. The first task of our project is to identify the manufacturer type and model of devices connected to a Wi-Fi network. On the other hand, both the system administrator and the users are interested in finding out if there is any malicious device in the network. So, our second task is to detect malicious device or abnormal devices whose network traffic devolves from benign patterns. When a mobile or IoT device is connected to a wireless network, it constantly sends out broadcast or multicast packets such as DHCP, MDNS, SSDP, and so on. The core idea of our solution is to fingerprint devices using features from these packets. To start, we went out to collect data from public wireless networks such as hotel Wi-Fi, airport Wi-Fi, coffee shops, and so on. We connected our laptops to open Wi-Fi networks and saved all broadcast and multicast packets that were delivered to us. We also collect the data from our own homes and our lab networks. In about half a year, we collected the broadcast and the multicast packets from 176 Wi-Fi networks from seven countries. Our data set contains more than 30,000 devices. Each device is identified by its unique MAC address. We would like to note that our data was collected through a completely passive approach. We didn't turn up promiscuous mode, which means we were the legitimate and intentional reservers of this broadcast and multicast package. We have discussed the data collection process with two IRBs and got their approval. We attempted to label the devices. First, we are able to physically approach about 400 devices and label each of them with manufacturer, type, and model. This is the ground truth data set. Next, we use human intelligence to examine any readable content in these packets. We were able to annotate about 4,000 devices with all three labels. In addition, we also annotated over 6,000 devices with manufacturer on tap, but not the exact model. We left over 15,000 devices with only manufacturer. Finally, we took the annotated dataset and removed all human interpretable contents from the packet. We call this the centralized data. We extracted the three types of features from the data. The first is the identifiers, such as MAC prefix and the host name attributes from the DHCP packets. They carry a significant amount of information that may help with device identification. However, they are often available except MAC prefix. Meanwhile, some of them could be easily tampered by anyone who knows the OS. Our main features are key-value pairs and the pseudo lateral language features extracted from the content of the broadcast and the multicast packets. They are almost always available and relatively reliable. It's actually not easy to tap with those boring numbers and codes without being noticed. Later, our model will show that these features provide abundant information for device identification. 
Finally, we extracted the features from the device description files retrieved through the URL in SSDP Notify packets. They were only used in validating the accuracy of our approach. Our initial observations tell us three things. One, each protocol generates an independent set of features. Two, features from different protocols complement each other. Three, not all protocols are available in all devices. Intuitively, these observations suggest the use of multi-view learning. Features from different protocols are laterally organized into views and the classifier will be optimized across all the views. So, we designed a multi-view, wide and deep learning framework for device classification and abnormal device detection. The framework consists of two structures. A deep neural network is used to maximize the generalization performance. A wide component is used to memorize how the views respond to the labels. Let's look at the red box here. It's the deep component. It's like a standard deep neural network. The last function is to optimize the general classification performance with all input features. The last one is the white component. It's essentially a multi-view classifier with late viewing. The last function is to optimize classification performance on each view. For benign devices, the views are supposed to agree with each other as much as possible. Therefore, our third loss function is to maximize view consistency for the benign samples. We also have one more loss function that is used for malicious device detection. We will describe it later. We use three metrics to measure the performance of device identification. First, the coverage is a portion of devices that we can recognize. Next, the accuracy is a portion of recognized devices that are correctly recognized. Finally, the OIR is a portion of all devices that are correctly recognized. We we'll first compare our solution with two state-of-art methods on the ground truth data. As we can see from the figure, we provide the best overall performance at all granularity levels. Especially, we significantly outperform the other two in the identification of type and model. Next, we we'll run the experiments on the annotator data set. Our approach again provides the best overall performance. The overall identification rate is somewhere between 95% to 98%. Finally, we test all performance in extreme conditions using the centralized data. As we have described, the centralized dataset doesn't have any human interpretable content. This experiment will give a lower bound of the performance of our solution. As shown in this figure, the OIR is still pretty high in the range of 75% to 88%. Okay, let's come back to the task of abnormal device detection. The last loss function of our framework is to maximize the view inconstants for devices that are known to be malicious. In testing, we measure the correlation among views for each device. If the view inconstance is larger than a threshold, we label it as suspicious and give it to the administrator for further analysis. Here is an example of a group of malicious devices we found. They all appear to be very similar to Apple TV in the MDS view but they also appear to be something else like Apple TV in all other views. This triggers our detector. We first examine the devices and found that they are all smart TVs that collaborate with a company called HappyCast. They also put Apple's AirPlay through MDS. This means that other Apple devices could discover them as Apple TV and play content on them. However, AirPlay is Apple's proprietary protocol which is never open-sourced. 
Our guess is that someone reverse engineered Apple's AirPlay and deployed on these devices. Technically, they are like forged Apple TVs. This example shows that we are able to evaluate the view inconsistencies and use this information to detect abnormal devices. In summary, we present a novel device identification approach. Our core idea is to extract features from the broadcast and the multicast packets and use a multi-view wide and deep learning model for device identification. Meanwhile, we discover the disagreements across views to detect fabricated or forged devices. Finally, we would like to thank our sponsors and thank you for listening.